And now, after all of that, let's do something a little bit lighter, shall we? Okay, I gotta ask why why Yuki has two keyboards of different sizes. I mean, to go with his eight different PCs, obviously. Right, but it's like, why why do you need a keyboard that it has bigger keys than the other one? ハートマークとか本当やめてほしいんだけどしかたないちょっと早いけど行くかなあめんどくさ You know, credit where it's due, he saw the whole gang bullshit going down and he was like, you know what? I don't need to be hanging out with you people anymore. <laughs> Geo's got uh, his role covered. Are you ready to experience the suffering of Yuki? Sign me the fuck up, yes. Hell yeah, let's do it. Again, it's weird how, like, the first three lines of that scene were voice acted, and then the rest is all just text. Yeah, it's really weird that they gave the, uh, the nameless kid, uh, or was his name Takashi or something? Yeah. It, it's weird that they gave him a voice line, but not, uh, Yuki. I mean... You remember that a lot of the budget probably went to these scenes existing at all, and considering the rest of the voice acting costs, we, we've been over this. I'm aware, it's just weird where the budget went sometimes. Yeah, this is just going to be the next half an hour, isn't it? Just Sora making Yuki's life a living hell constantly. It's like the next 20 minutes. <laughs>
Do we even have a dungeon for this uh side story, or...? Yes, there is eventually a dungeon. Oh, okay. Th this is actually going somewhere eventually. Okay, I mean, I would have been down if this was an entire uh, sub-story that's just, uh... Sora pulling Yuki out of his shell, but, you know... It is extremely cute how, like, absolutely acutely Sora gets Yuki and just systematically presses every single one of his buttons. Oh yeah, she's got him dead to rights already. And of course, the most damning revelation about Yuki so far, he's a fucking gotcha trash player. I can confirm, that does in fact make you a terrible person. Agreed. The heat of a thousand newborn suns. appreciate how like every single time she does something for him like she's always being really nice and then like but the words that she's actually saying are just like fucking burn after burn <laughs> <laughs> well that said yuki's got like a couple thousand layers of carbon that kind of need to be burned off him the dichotomy, comedy, and tragedy right here. Oh, but oh no, we have a rival now. Yeah, it's like, I, I don't even know who you are, man. <laughs> Can't wait for you to just eat shit. Have you- have you tried talking to her? At all? Yeah, I'm just throwing that one out there. You know the answer to that in your heart, Artix. Well, you saw it here first, folks. Yuki Shinomiya, better than an incel. Frankly, I'm just glad he's, uh, above that bar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would be really easy for Yuki to kind of slip in that direction. Mm.
And of course, yeah, it basically, it, it really is kind of amusing that, like, the only way that they could construct, like, a properly despicable rival for Yuki is to just, to uh, go that route and just throw one at him, just, to uh, like, right here and now. Yeah, no, the kid's a piece of shit, but at least he's not this bad. So does this weirdo creep even get a name, or is he just, like, a spear carrier, basically? Nope, he will forever be male student. He's about to go fall into an eclipse now, right? Eh, sooner or later, anyway. If he does, can we just leave him there, please? I think Sora would go in after him, even if we didn't, so... I would fucking bust the gut laughing if Sora charges into the eclipse and just Yuki's like, Good luck in there, bye, and walks away. I do appreciate that her reasoning is basically, finally, now it's my turn to do it to other people after all of them doing it to me all my life. That's probably the last thing you want to say if you want to get her off your back, Yuki. I mean, his his last line there is literally, God damn it, that's not a compliment. Blaming other people for your problems. How did you even fall into that? That thing spawned like a solid six feet away from you. You just had to go and poke the crystals. <laughs> 
it would have been funnier if it just kind of just slid right towards him and sucked him in that way. It's like, oh no, they're heat-seeking now. Oops, shit, I missed. Hang on, let me just readjust. God, that'd be so fucking embarrassing It just... You cracking open an eclipse with an in with your incel rage and just someone else gets sucked into it instead of you. I mean, that sounds like it would be pretty on brand for an incel, to be completely honest. <laughs> Damn. Damn. <laughs> anyway, this uh, looks familiar. Yep, that good old Falcom asset reuse coming back into play again. Think before charging into things, says boy who just charged into things without thinking himself. Uh, no, he was totally thinking. He was like, if I don't go charging in there then Sora will be there by herself, and then God only knows what'll happen to her, and God fucking damn it, I can't believe I'm gonna have to do this. That's certainly a thing to say to the fastest party member. Yeah. Anyway, there is, um, absolutely nothing of interest about this dungeon. It is, I mean, aside from it being the cool tile set, it is just, like, it's got three different enemy types. There's no terrain to speak of. It just kind of is. Yeah, I think I would have been okay with this just being uh, an entirely dialogue-based um, side story. Or just have it be like an incredibly short dungeon. I mean, it's like a six-minute dungeon, seven-minute dungeon. Like, it's not particularly long. It just, it just really didn't need to exist. Especially since the majority of the enemies are uh, weak to steel, so Yuki's kind of the point man, and yeah. Not just is Yuki the point man. Half of the enemies are ha half of the enemies are resistant to magic, and the other half of them are like those crystal dudes who have a shield that just outright blocks shots until you hit them with a power attack. So. It just kind of sucks all around. Anyway, have I mentioned to y'all that uh, Oath is the best Ease game? Because, you know... Just throw that out there. I'll get around to playing it at some point. Same. So far, my only experience with, uh, I guess, Ease 3 is the Super Nintendo version. For like, 20 minutes. The Super Nintendo version isn't that bad. It's just, you know, obviously, it's it's old ease compared to. Well, Oath isn't really modern ease, but it is nevertheless 
much more modern than old school Yi's. Also, like, they, they keep, like, remaking, like, basically every Yi's game, uh, like, except five every couple of years, so... That, that's my question, like, why, why the hell is Falcom, like, seemingly just the deathly adverse to remaking East 5 in any capacity? I mean, we're pretty sure that's the next thing that's is gonna come after, after... Now that they're done with East 9 and they're getting a lot of the, uh... Because, like, a after Kuro comes out, like, it's gotta be the next thing, right? There's, there's nowhere left for them to go. They could do East 10. They could do East 10. <laughs> <laughs> like, they have to eventually. It's the only one they haven't done. So in short, hold out for the, uh, the hope of East 5 remake, rather than just playing East 5. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. What what platforms are East, is East Five even on right now? That is a good question. I don't actually know that. I think it was like PS One. It was. It is an SNES game. It's an SN. Oh no! It, it, was, it was remade. It was remade in two thousand six for the P, for the PS Two. Okay. Is that version available on not the PS2? I don't think so. And maybe in English? I don't think it was released. Yeah, no, East 5 is always, like, from what I've been reading, just sort of the one that got away, and it will continue to be the one that got away, like, just forever. Yeah, yeah, the first... Yeah, Ease 5 was never released in English. It was the, uh... Yeah, uh, Ease 6 was the first one to be released in English after Ease 3. Hmm. And then, I know 4 got a remake of, like, its three different versions. And that was in English, too, right? Yeah, that was released on the Vita. That's Memories of Celsetta. Okay. And I think, yeah, that's got a PC port now, so... Hey, we got a Courage rank up. I'm glad Ko got braver from his friends doing a dungeon without him. Well, you know, it, it gives him more confidence, because, look, if... If my underlings can do this without me, just imagine what we could do together. <laughs> Alright, so who do we got as the boss this time? Would you believe if I told you it was another palette swap? Yes. That's that's good. It is good that you would believe me if I told you it was a palette swap. Remember this fucker from way back in the first dungeon? Yeah. Okay, but what if... What if he had bigger numbers? Really? That, that's it? They didn't even give him, like, new attacks or anything? He's a little bit faster, but that doesn't really, like, change much. I'm gonna consider that bigger numbers, just because it's a bigger speed number, I guess. And also, like, a little bit faster versus the two fastest characters in the party, like, uh... That's probably, like, 
amounts to a hill of beans in this sense, but, uh... Anyway, despite what you might think, given that, you know, the party is Yuki and Sora, this is not a fight that you want to take lightly. Like, it's not like the boss is any harder, per se, from, you know, back when we fought him the first time, but his numbers are so much bigger that getting hit with just about anything is a quick way to eat about... 600 or 700 damage. Oh yeah, no, he's just like ripped right through like all of your HP and like it's not even halfway dead yet. Yeah, it just hurts to get hit. Oh, I guess there's one thing that is new is that he has that shield attack which aside from just, you know, giving him a shield also causes these ice these, uh, these ice spikes to come up from the ground and those will fuck you up. But that, that's it. It's the only thing that's new about him. Anyway, I will spare you. I got owned like three times against this boss. Also, is it a metaphor for anything that the boss of the incel chapter was a literal one-eyed monster? Bueller? Bueller? Anyone? We're just gonna leave him here, right? I was gonna say, yeah, we, uh... Did it? Question mark? I mean, Yuki seemed content to basically just walk away and uh, be done with it. I mean, so, but what, what did we actually accomplish, though? Like, sure, we dragged him out of the eclipse, but he, he's still an incel. I don't know, maybe Asuka's Mind Wipe program has something that can deal with that shit. Why did they get scolded? Well, because they went into the Eclipse Gate without any help or backup and didn't tell anybody where they were going. They had each other. Yeah, and they both nearly died fighting the boss. Fair. They both did die a couple times, but you didn't know that. <laughs> あ、<笑><笑> どうしたんだ、こんなところで。そうそう。昨日は助かったよ。今度バイト代出たらなんかおごらせてくれよな。え?もしかして今の僕に声をかけたわけ。なんだよ、いきなり。気安すぎるでしょ。
昨日は大変だったねってこんなところでどうしたのいきなりってわけでもないのか<笑>僕は一人でも全然構わないんだけどまあこういうのも悪くはないかな、yeah, Like we said, Yuki does eventually get better He just needs a few whacks from the Sora-shaped character development stick それよりそろそろ余礼だし急いだ方がよくない本当だ走ろうユキくんはいはいってだからその呼び方はやめろってな It's still a work in progress but we're getting there As long as we're moving forward And thus his suffering comes to a close for today Rest easy Yuki Tomorrow's another day though